Hi, this is Ruth Teresa with One Inspiring Woman, and today I'm answering a few Dear Ruth questions. So this one is about the Battle of Normandy, and that started um, June 6, 1944, and ran until August of 1944, and typically known as D-Day. Um, it's one of those, it is one of the places that um, I will say there's a lot of stuck energy, and that's what their question was, is there a lot of stuck energy? And there is still a lot of stuck energy um, on Normandy Beach. But one of the things I think is really interesting as my energy kind of hones in on that area, one of the things that comes forward is not just necessarily the people that passed, the men that passed on the beach itself. There were people that uh, are men that passed um, on the transports coming forward. So there's a lot of stuck energy even in the beach area or out in the water. Um, several transports uh, were hit uh, prior to getting close enough to the beach and some of the uh, men when they came off the transports were so um, Down with you know what I'm saying like had so many things on their packs um, Food and and ammunition and that sort of thing and it kind of just weighed them down and some of them drowned that day but uh, one or uh, two of them uh, have come forward to kind of give me a little bit of information so one of them that comes forward um, his name is Frederick and he was on one of the first transport, I think he was like on the third transport um, that came into Normandy Beach. And when they did, as they got closer, um, one of his friends or one of the acquaintances that he knew was standing right next to him and his friend was shot um, on the transport, wasn't even able to get off the transport itself and get onto the beach. Um, so that energy is kind of a little bit stuck there. But I also get that there were several transports were, that were hit further out. And so when the gentlemen um, were able to make it to, you know, where they could stand up, um, several of them lived. It's one of those, one of them, um, his name is Marcus, comes through and he does have a Hispanic accent. And I almost feel like Della Luna um, is the last name um, or something similar to that. Um, he was, um, um, his transport was hit prior to getting there to getting on the beach and he wasn't that far away but it's kind of got a deep slope to it so when they came off um the transport um he kind of like sank down and he wasn't that far underneath the waves because you have to remember they're still fighting all of this stuff on them and then they've got waves coming in of of uh coming in uh behind them kind of like pushing them around so um when he sank, he wasn't that far off the land, and so he was able to kind of push forward. And he said one of the things that just, I think he thinks, kept him alive at that point was just this overwhelming desire to keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Uh, but there were several people um, that passed um, in the water um, edge that were just trying to get to the land or trying to get out of the water. Uh, several transports were blown up, and so uh, one gentleman um, that he was on a transport and I get his name, um, is Mickey or Mikey. And, um, he was like kind of almost in the second wave of people coming in. He was like, they were already battling there. And so you could see the battle, you know, right in front of him as they're getting close. Now he was tall. So he was kind of standing in the back of the transport. Um, but he, even then it's one of those, like the transports were really, really full. So he didn't even really have to stand up. They were kind of shoulder to shoulder with their backpacks and that sort of thing. So he's kind of like holding on to things. Um, but one of the transports that were right in front of him, uh, was hit and he's like, saw people, you know, bodies like flying out. And he said it reminded him a lot of uh, TV nowadays of, you know, almost this like larger than life in, um, event happening and it was really overwhelming for him scared the bejesus out of him but he um, did make it to Normandy beach he did pass um in like 1968 or so um and he passed from cancer lung cancer um i can feel it like in my chest area so he um had a great life and went on to have children and get married uh, but one of the things that he still talks about is he's still drawn to that area even now because they were such friends and they had made lifelong friends um, going through something like that that not everybody else would understand. Not everybody else is going to get that energy. So um, the other thing I get um, from this area is there were a couple of ships that were um, hit 
um, on the Allied side as they were moving forward. So I'm talking about the big transport ships, not the little ones, the big, big ships. A couple of them were hit um, and no one passed away on that, but it was really scary. And so as those people have passed, they've gone back to that same area. And that's probably a good mile or mile and a half out. Uh, where I feel that energy at um, in their energy. Um, I also get that they're still stuck energy at like Omaha Beach, which was a battle not too prior in advance to this. I'm not really a history buff, so I'm just telling you what they're saying. It's like it happened beforehand. And because that was kind of really unsuccessful or not as successful as they were hoping it would be, um, it really worried a lot of the men. It was kind of like on their mind of what's gonna happen or how is this gonna happen. So I will tell you that a lot of them, of course, had fear. A lot of them um, kind of just felt like they had to do their job. And it's one of those, they really didn't feel like heroes, even though we would think of them today as heroes for serving our country. Um, they not, don't necessarily think of themselves as heroes. So I'm gonna pull a couple of angel cards and see if I can get any more information from them. Um, so this one is kind of popping forward. Um, playfulness. One of the things I get is these were young men. Um, these were not, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 year old men. A lot of these um, men uh, forged their birth certificates so they could go into war early. Some of them were as young as like 16 or 17 or 18 years of age, just barely at the time that they passed. So they were much younger, um, but they also felt like this obligation to protect their country. And so that's something I think is really admirable with their energy. And still to this day, they're still concerned about our country. Uh, let me pull another angel card and see what else I can pull. Freedom. That's what they were fighting for. Total freedom. They believed that um, Hitler would take over the world and um, make a world that um, they didn't want to live in. And they were scared of this. So it's one of those, that's one of the things that I think was really interesting with their energy is that they were fighting for our freedom, fighting for freedom that we still have that luxury today. So I think that's kind of the interesting energy. And I think in a lot of ways, people that, um, that enlisted at that time after Pearl Harbor, um, really enlisted to, you know, fight for freedom or fight for, um, our security here, um, miracles. Many of these men saw miracles every day in their life. People that should have been killed by a bullet didn't. Um, people that, um, one of them is showing me uh, like an image of when they got shot on the beach um, and he got shot in the right knee area because my right knee is like really killing me. Um, and I kind of feel like that is uh, from another one. So uh, not Marcus, but Mark. Um, is coming through and he's telling me that he got shot not necessarily right at the knee but kind of right on the side of his knee and to him a miracle was is you know when they started yelling out for corpsmen and people to come and help that they did even though these corpsmen didn't have a lot of um, you know um, security around them or, you know, the bullets are whizzing by them as much as they are the other soldiers. There's no protection whatsoever. And they thought that was just a miracle. These guys that are just out there trying to help the other ones, you know, get back to medical aid or get them back um, someplace where they could be uh, medically treated. So that was something that they really felt was a miracle because here they are with weapons and they can feel like they can protect themselves or protect the other people around them. But the corpsmen really didn't have that luxury because they couldn't waste the time. They couldn't waste the energy to carry a gun um, to protect themselves. So that's something that they were really proud of. Let me pull one more card for us. They're asking me to pull one more card. Um, new love. So one of the things I get with this is that many of these young men had loves back at home and a lot of them really felt um, an obligation um, or to come back live, to uh, come back and be with their sweetheart and get married and have children and all of those wonderful things. And a lot of them passed away over there, a lot of them. And that's kind of like a sadness, you know, like holding their picture. One of them is sh showing me a picture. If I can find something that looks like her, I will, I will post it with this. Um, her name is Lucy and he was just in love with her. His name is Pete and her name was Lucy and um, they never got together. He never came back. Um, the, he was just one of those missing in action for uh, for several months, uh, listed as missing in action after uh, Normandy. 
and then um, eventually they were able to kind of figure out who he was and where he needed to go and his um, he did have a proper burial um, so that was something that was very honorable for him to do and I do feel like he was a transplant he was not born in the United States he came over uh, from Europe and then went back to Europe um, to go and fight for our freedom over there I thank you so much for joining me today and if you have a dear Ruth question make sure you're submitting it to me thanks and I'll be talking to you soon